Hare Krishna. Once again, welcome to my channel, Purposeful Prosperity. We are continuing trying to extract the wisdom from the little book of common sense investing. And today we are trying to go to the chapter number seven's learning. The title says the grand illusion. And where it says that surprise, the return reported by mutual funds are rarely earned by mutual fund investors. Very important thing. And I think no, none of the mutual funds people are giving this data that how much their average mutual fund investors are earning out of their funds. Let's just deep dive into this chapter. So first of all, while explaining this grand illusion, Mr. Bogle is saying that the fund investors are anyway earning less than the index fund over a long term. But even those less return also, they are not earning the 100% of that. And that's a grand illusion actually. So he's saying that in addition to paying these heavy cost of fund manager, which they extract for their services, the shareholders are paying an additional cost, which is even larger. And we'll talk about this additional cost in the later part of, the, of our session. And the third point he's saying that is that mutual fund return does not tell us what returns were earned by the average fund investor. And that returns turns out to be far lower than the actual mutual fund return. Let's just go more deep into this. So here is the data which I have taken uh, from the Access Mutual Fund Research. And if you look at the equity fund return, you can see that the investor return are way lower than the fund return. Although the SIP returns are better than the investor returns. That's why we are saying that always invest using SIPs. So you can see the same fund is the same factors there even with the hybrid fund. You can see between 12.5% and the investor return is just 7.4%. It's only the debt fund where these funds are quite comparable. So this is our Indian data, which clearly says that investor returns are much lower than the fund returns. So one of the hints which Poggle is giving is that, uh, and the question comes that why is that difference? Why investors are not able to get this, the fund returns? The hint the Poggle is giving is that the money flows into most fund after good performance and goes out when bad performance follows. So that's the mantra to know why there is a gap between the fund return and the investor return. And to explain this further, he is giving two basic concepts. One is called the time waiting return, time weighing return, and other is the money weighing return. So when we talk about the time vague returns, it normally measures the performance of your portfolio manager or your fund manager. And that is what all the fund manager typically reports always this time weighted return. But what intelligent investor is looking, he's looking for a money weighted return because money weighted returns measure the performance of the fund or portfolio which takes into account the impact of the capital flows from investor into and out of the fund. So this money weighted return is something that we should be requesting from every fund manager. I'm sure I think Sebi at some point of time is going to put mandatory that apart from giving their time weighted returns, they should also give their money weighted returns so that the investors can make a better decision. And it's because of this money weighting returns, if you calculate, that's how we came to know that the uh, average return, average uh, investor is getting much less return than your fund investor. So once again, uh, Boggle is giving the data from the S&P 500 of US data. There is another report where he says that whether you take one year, three years, five year, 10 year, 20 year or 30 year returns, your investor returns are always less than your index fund returns in US. 
see such a long data we have available but then also i think every investor thinks that i am going to beat the index i am going to get the better return than index friends this is a great illusion pogal is giving the data he is saying that the, during the past 25 years smp index fund has been providing an annual return of 9.1% while the actual equity funds are earning almost 1.3% less which is 7.8% why because of the cost but the average fund investor are earning even less than those fund returns which is just 6.3% again 1.5% less than the average mutual fund return why once again because of their timing they are trying to invest in a fund when it is performing best and once a perform when the funds performing bad they are exiting out the market and that's their mistake so once again pogal is i think very good in providing data so i think he is once again given a data of for close to 25 years that's really a large data and he is trying to compare the index fund and the average large cap fund here so he is saying that the index fund returns uh if you look at the right hand side so index fund returns and the fund return there is a slight gap for the index fund but if you see this gap between the market return and the fund return is really large for an average actively managed mutual fund why because of the cost that we are paying that we already discussed in the previous chapter then if you look at the investor return so investor return in the index fund is less than the fund return but the gap is not that huge but if you look at the actively managed large cap fund the investor return is much lower than the fund return and if you want to see the real return where if you take into account the inflation and you can see the index fund return was 34500 at but on the actively managed large cap fund it was 14400 can you see almost less than 50% of return so so much of money our investors are losing by investing in these actively managed large cap funds and not investing in the index funds so if you are in the intelligent investor you will go by this data and not make the same mistake which a normal retail investor is making we trying to become a intelligent investor so bogle is further continuing in this chapter and explaining about the 12 penalties of cost and the investing behavior so we already know that 1% 1.5% penalty that average fund we are having because their costs are really large but the 12 penalty of faulty timing and adverse selection is making it even larger this data clearly indicates that the fund manager returns falls well short of fund returns the evidence is compelling that long term returns on equity funds lacks the stock market by a substantial amount largely accounted by their cost and the return earned by the fund investor lacked the market by more than double that substantial lack so guys we have to as a intelligent investor we have to really avoid these two penalties one is the cost and second is the investor behavior and index fund investing is the way to avoid both these penalties further is bogle is talking about that the inflamed by this uh, heady optimism and greed and the enticed by the wile of mutual fund marketers investors poured their saving into equity funds at a bull market peak if you are definitely putting maximum of your amount of money in the bull market peak definitely you are not going to make return which are even beating your fixed deposit so first shareholders investing in equity fund pays a heavy timing penalty why because they are investing when the markets are peak and with they are withdrawing the money when markets are very cheap it just the opposite they invested too much of money in their uh, of their saving in the equity funds when markets are at a peak and when the bear market comes they really takes out all the money from the market and they put into fixed deposit 
but an intelligent investor should be doing just the opposite of that thing but that's not the behavior is all about and second he is saying that they paid a selection penalty pouring their money not only into market at the wrong time but into the wrong fund also this is the second mistake is again further deteriorating your returns once again instead of investing in index fund you are trying to select a fund which has really performed fantastic in past 3 to 5 years and you poured full their money into that thing and a uh, uh, reversion to mean principle is saying that a perform who has really a fund who has really performed really well in the last 2 3 years is going to underperform for the next coming few years and that is where you again get frustrated and some point of time you will get up from that fund and you have to pay some taxes and again all your wealth creation your compounding all that thing is stopped so you are simply destroying your wealth so bogal is concluding that with both counterproductive timing and poor fund selection investors simply fall to practice what common sense would have told them so they are simply failing to practice about their own common senses and investing is all about common sense that we learn in the first chapter bogle is further saying that the investor emotions plus the fund in the industry promotions equals trouble and guys nowadays with so much of social media financial influencers youtube channels i have to say that a common retail investor is in a big big trouble and the aim of this channel is to save such real investors from this trouble that is we are trying to educate yourself we are trying to not only try we are all are trying to educate ourselves so that we can avoid these troubles here the bogal is saying that the when the counterproductive investor emotions are magnified by counterproductive fund industry promotions a little good at apt result we have seen that the fund industry industry organize more and more funds usually funds that carry considerably higher risk than the stock market itself and magnifies the problem by highly advertising the eye catching pass returns earned by these hottest fund you always see that companies are launching new new funds only when that sector is performing fantastic if you see the current market scenario the psu bank has written a great rally and you see that every fund manager is is uh promoting the is launching their new funds defense sector has done very well so now you see the defense funds have been launched by every fund is but do you think that is the same whatever happened in the past is going to uh, is going to repeat in the future my friends no so we have to avoid these counterproductive fund industry promotions and when the market become peaks we are seeing investor are putting more and more money why because fear of missing out so once you have fear of missing out even at now the nifty has a 20000 plus people are putting more and more money they think that okay we are missed something okay let me catch the train but that's not the way of investing further bogle is saying that mutual fund industry itself has compounded the problem by playing on investors emotion bringing out new funds to meet the feats and fashions of the day and then aggressively advertising and marketing them and that is what we should be avoiding these marketing and advertising are very are big trouble for our investing journey and we should avoid them and what's more investor also overwhelmingly choose this new economy funds technology funds defense funds psu funds and the hottest performing growth funds to the virtual exclusion of more conservative value oriented fund you see right now everybody is focusing on the growth fund but nobody is focusing on the value funds why because once again they look at their past returns and the value fund past returns are not good so they are definitely investing the growth funds and that's where their money is going to stuck because reversion to mean principle Further Bogal is saying that the fund investor has been chasing past performance since time immemorial. Although every mutual fund ad is saying that past performance 
does not guarantee your future returns but that is what every one of us doing just like on a cigarette bundle it says that it's injurious to health but then also everybody is smoking they also allows their emotions and perhaps sometimes they greed and these emotions and greed sometimes cover up your reasoning your logical reasoning and your common sense are covered by these emotions and greed and that's where you make the wrong decision bogal has further provided the data once again of 15 years starting from 1990 to 2005 and if you look at this data you can see that the, when the market was at peak in 1999 or 2000 that's where people have invested maximum of their money and that too on to the aggressive mutual funds not on the value funds and if you look at the 1990 when the market was at bottom or 2000 Two, once again, when the market is bottom, there is hardly any investment in aggressive mutual funds. In fact, in 2002, it was negative. People are taking out money from those aggressive aggressive funds. In fact, it was the right time to invest. It was the best time to invest in those funds. But the investor behavior is just the opposite. So much of awareness is there in US. about these markets mutual funds i would say much better than the indians i think indians are still learning about all these markets and all. and the way the markets are evolving in us i think they are much higher even the retail contribution is much higher there india is on the path for that but there also we can see this investor behavior and that's a mistake and we should learn from this data this life is very small guys you are uh, you cannot make all the mistakes in your life and learn it's better to learn from other people's mistake and make yourself better that's the first class intelligence tells us that's a common sense tells us so bogal is saying that the buying funds based purely on their past performance is one of the stupidest thing an investor can do and i have to say i think most of our retail indian investors are doing this stupid thing and the aim of this channel is to make them aware about this thing and make sure that these promotions don't make them stupid then finally uh, bogal is ending with some of the key messages in this chapter where he says that speculation leads you to the wrong way it allow you to put your emotions first whereas investment gets emotions out of the picture look such a beautiful quote we always invest based on our emotions our emotions say oh no this stock is going to go up that's what reading is all about it's again emotions but investment is without emotions is being done it's the arithmetic it's the calculation but that's not what we are doing we are speculators we are not the investor so by reading by trying to get some knowledge from mr bogal we are on our on the journey from becoming an speculator to a investor so the first learning which he is giving is that the removing emotions from the equation that is about investor improving their short term market oriented behavior so if you remove the emotions from your equations then your behavior automatically get fixed second thing bogal is saying that the beauty of the index fund then lies not only on its low expenses but it also eliminates all those tempting funds choices that promises so much but deliver so little so if you are index fund investor you can definitely avoid all those promotions which has been done for those sector funds which were launched after a sector is performing or has given very good return third point bogle is saying that index fund can be held through thick and thin for an investment life cycle because emotions never enter in the equations and that's the reason the average uh, index fund return of a investor 
is slightly less than the index fund return. Why? Because emotions is out of the picture. You are not now never trying to beat the market. You are trying to get whatever market is trying to give you. That's why emotion is not coming into the picture. And the final point Bogle is saying that the winning formula of success in investing is owning the entire stock market through a low cost index fund and then doing nothing. Just stay the course. If you know that you have catched the right train, then please sit on your seat and enjoy your journey. No need to do anything fancy there. That's the way of investing. Further at the end of the chapter, he's saying about the, he's explaining about the four E's of Warren Buffett, where the Warren Buffett quote is, the greatest enemies of equity investors are expenses and emotions. Unfortunately, we are really using both our enemies to destroy our wealth. We are paying, paying high expenses in a hope to beat the market. At the same time, we are also working based on our emotions where we look at the past from performance and we think that he is my winner and that's where we make the mistakes. And these are the two greatest enemies. So my guys, take the advice of Mr. Bogle, take the advice of Warren Buffett. Instead of taking advice from some financial influencers, these are the veterans of investing. When they are saying something, it really makes a lot of sense. Further, Mr. Carls, he has given an example of Mr. Carls, where Mr. Carl says that it's fun to play around. So it has been asked that why people invest in mutual funds, active managed mutual funds, when the data clearly says that the passive investing is that wins. So he's saying that it's for fun. So it's human nature to try to select the right horse. But for the average person, I am more of an indexer. The predictability is so high for 10, 15 or 20 years that you will be in 85th percentile of performance. Why would you screw it up? And he's asking the question to every real investor that when you have a 85% success chances for a period of 10, 15 or 20 years, then why are we not taking that path? And why are we so confident of selecting our right horse? Which Bogle has clearly said that that's again a great myth that we think that we can select the best performing mutual fund. We will never be able to do that in a long run. For the Mr. Mark Hulbert, he's saying that the, assuming that the future is like the past, you can outperform 80% of your fellow investor over the next several decades by investing in an index fund and doing nothing else. But acquire the discipline to do something even better. Become a long-term index fund investor. The 80% of your retail investor you can beat by just investing in an index fund. Then why are we not doing this? Because our behavior is not allowing our common sense and reasoning to work. And we are trying to read such books so that we can have our good reasoning. We can have our strong common sense and reasoning so that our behavior can be overridden by our common sense and our reasoning. Not the opposite. And at the end, Mr. Mark Hulbert is further saying that the index fund are the only rational alternative for most, almost all mutual fund investors. So if you are a really intelligent investor, then please follow the advice of Mr. Mark, Mr. Warren Buffett, and Mr. John Bogle and invest in index mutual funds. So thank you guys for staying with me. I hope you guys make something valuable out of this session that we have today. So if you really uh, like this kind of a content, then please feel free to like, share and subscribe and share with your friends and family members so that they can also become aware, they can become strengthen their common sense. 
and their reasoning skills and they can really understand why we are investing in index fund so thank you hari krishna